Greetings to you all, friends. I trust by God's grace you are all doing well this uh, Sabbath afternoon. Let us thank God for, for that. And today we are going to touch our part two of, the, of part one of free from copper sin. And uh, from our previous um, part one, we all learn about the issue or the dangers of remaining part of the of uh, all these fallen denominational churches and ministries. And um, as we know that we are living in this end of times and most of the people, they believe that uh, their salvation depends upon uh, them being free from sin and also they are not even aware that uh, God can count them impure because of their connection with an organization and a ministry and denominational which are busy promoting the false doctrines and because of their connection uh, God is going to count them uh, impure and our scripture reading today it is found in the book of uh, Hosea chapter 2 and we shall read verse 2 so the book of Hosea chapter 2 and we shall read verse 2 it says plead with your mother and plead for she is not my wife and neither am I her husband. Let her therefore put away her wonders out of her sight and her adultery from her breast. So, in this scripture text, we understand that God is now saying, plead with your mother, and she, for she is not my wife. Neither am I her husband. Let her therefore put away her wonders out of her, of her sight and her adulteries from between her breast. My fellow beloved brothers and sisters, I am pleading with you to prayerfully um, listen to me very carefully because we are living in the end of times and there are a lot of teachings which are busy produced on the pulpits by most of the famous pastors which are 20 plus Millions of souls are busy looking up to for help. So, my brother and my sisters, I just pray that you can you could listen to me very carefully. So, in this text of Hosea chapter 2, now the mother it is speaking of the church. Now, the church which most of uh, the people are members, and now, and as we're gonna go down with the same chapter. We are going to understand something right here because we have to be free from corporate sin. And how do we separate us from all this issue of the separation from the corporate sin? Because in the book of Revelation chapter 18, which is the proceedings of the three angels' messages, we are seeing now the angel uh, of Revelation chapter 18 cry uh, with a loud voice and saying, Fallen, fallen, it is become fallen. Babylon is fallen. Come out of here, my people. Listen, we could share in your sins and receive the same word, cup of the wrath of God, which has been prepared for her. My brother and my sisters, I would like to tell you one thing. You see, if you, can, you could remain being a member of any fallen denomination, there is a reward which is awaiting for everyone who is. Uh, actually following in the footsteps of all these um, fallen denominational and ministries. So, what uh, was the sin of God's chosen church in this uh, verse which you have read of Hosea? So, the, 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 the sins is one, wondom or harlotry. So, how can a Chosen church of God commit harlotry. This is one of the questions which you must understand now. So as you pay a very good attention, the church is supposed to be a faithful bride or a wife to Christ. We are on uh, our way of uh, Christ's second coming. And we know that as the, uh, as the church, which is a group of people awaiting uh, for the second coming or the second advent, of the bridegroom, which is Christ himself, the husband of the church. So in this text now, Christ is now saying, and all these denominations, 
They are not my wife. In other words, he is not the husband of all these fallen denominations. Why is he saying that? Because if you can read again, he's now saying, I plead with you now, plead with your mother so that uh, tell it to remove what he wants and from her side and her adulteries from between her breast. So, pay a, a, a very good attention. Now, so, what is God's response to a once faithful bride who uh, has become a hallowed church? So, the response of God. Now, he first called her to come away from her hallowedry because she refused to repent. If she refused to repent, so, God is going to send her aside and uh, he put her away or in other words, he gave her a bill of divorce and which is uh, in Jeremiah chapter chapter 3. All right. I want you to turn your Bibles with me in the book of uh, Jeremiah chapter 3 and we shall read uh, verse 6 through 8. The book of Jeremiah chapter 3 and we want to understand uh, uh, the, this issue of the bill of divorce. Because too many of, uh, of, of the people right now, especially the Adventists, they are actually sitting at ease now with the pride on their foreheads. Because they think that because they are only keeping the Sabbath. So therefore, all the things they are not even uh, caring about them. So they think they are safely... But just because they keep the Sabbath. Now, listen to this. Then the Bible says in verse uh, 6, Thus says the Lord, the, the Lord said unto me, In the days of Josiah the king, the king, have you seen what backsliding Israel has done? She has gone up on every high mountain and under every green tree, and there played the hallowed. And I say uh, uh, after she, uh, she, has, uh, she had done all these things, return to me. But she said she did not return. And yet a, a treacherous sister, Judah, saw it. Then I saw that for all the causes for which the exciting Israel had committed adultery, I put her away and given her a certificate of divorce. Yet a treacherous sister, Judah, did not fear, but went and played the harlot also. So, if a once pure church played a harlotry, now, to understand this, we all know from the, from the time when William Miller, when he preached the, 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 the truth of the might angel of Revelation chapter 10, we understand that it was built upon the rock, and we know that our pillars of our faith were at the sanctuary message. And also, we are seeing the recipients like Ellen White, James White, and other. They also uphold the truth once uh, delivered to the, to the old saints in the book of Jude 1. Now, they were speaking against every false doctrine, including the Trinity doctrine, which has become the very foundation and the fundamental belief of the Seventh-day Adventist and every individual when they are joining uh, or becoming a member of a Seventh-day Adventist, they are tried by the, by the belief in the Trinity and it is now even on our baptismal certificates. So, they waited for our pioneers to, to put to rest in order for them to introduce or to brought Trinity into Adventism, we are seeing like Anderson and Leroy Froome, when Froome sent them the message to Anderson, and they all, and the response was saying, I was waiting for the pioneers to put to death, and then we get able to introduce our teachings into Adventism. And we are seeing they, they introduce all the teachings, and now we are even having the members of the current Seventh-day Adventists. They are not even 
uh, give them time to start their own past history and they even hold and, and embrace the teachings of the Trinity and even go out ahead and decode the books of, of new order, like the book Evangelism. It is a compilation by Leroy Froome. And now all the confusion in the Seventh-day Adventist movement, it is because or caused by that book and all other books which were published after the death of Ellen White. And those books are just compilations. So, now God is now saying to even my beloved self, the Adventist, because she has become fallen, you must understand this. Seventh day Adventist, it does not appear as fallen. It is fallen. It is fallen. And this is why God is giving the message of Revelation 18, verse 4. Come out of here. This message, it is not only to the uh, people like Catholics, Muslims, or Buddhism. No. Fallen, in other words, this movement, this church, it was on the right standing with God. But now, because she is, uh, now, she now uh, uh, go and do harlotry, she has become fallen because of her wonders. And this is why God is now saying on verse 4 through 5 of the book of Hosea, and it says in the book of Hosea, chapter 2, we shall read verse 4 through 5. And it says, because we must know for sure that uh, we are having the pastors, most of the famous pastors, and they are misinterpreting the Bible in their own way because they are seeking for, they want to be loved, highly favored by the majority and also highly favored by the men of sin because they are no longer protesting against the men of sin, which is purpose. And as a result, we are seeing like a man like Diop, Ted Wilson, even trying to give the distorted ideas of the mark of the beast. He's saying uh, the mark of the beast, it is the worship of any other day uh, other than the Sabbath. Are you just, come on guys. The mark of the beast, it is the Sunday law when it is enforced by a decree in the land of United States of America. And what is the image of the beast? When it is the union of the church and state, and when the church is now giving the powers or controlling the state. So in other words, we are going to see the Rome, the Pope controlling the, actually, America. And very soon, America, it is going to put or to enforce the law for the papacy. So, when we are seeing the, uh, all these churches, which are some even today are being called the evangelicals, because they are no longer protesting against the men of sin. And same applies the seventh the Adventist. It is no longer protesting against, but it has already adopted the beliefs, the teachings of Rome, and now the traditions and the belief system of Rome, it is now within the Adventism. And yet we are seeing like most of the famous pastors are sitting at easy, busy, giving the people the uh, lies, smothering people every time and again, every Sabbath in, out, telling people lies. And anyone who's going to speak against all these lies, it is now being called with the names heretics. My brother and my sisters, open the Bible with me in the book of Hosea, chapter 2. Read verse, uh, verse 4. It says, Now, I will not give mercy on his children, for they are the children of harlotry. For their mother has played the harlot. She who uh, conceived them has behaved shamefully, for she said, I will go after my lovers 
who give me my bread and my water and my wool and my linen, my oil and my drink. My beloved son, the Adventist, which is the mother church, and she has been called the mother. And now God is now saying to every member of the Seventh-day Adventist, I will not have mercy on every member of the Seventh-day Adventist. Why? Because they are the children of harlotry. Her mother, she conceived them. So all the people who joined this movement, which are the children of a harlotry, I will not have mercy on them. Because their mother, she, cons um, she actually go to her lovers. Where are they? Her lovers, the Sunday Adventists, they even now stretch the hands and claps the hands with the purpose. The man of sin, the son of perdition, a man who exalts himself as God, a man who says Mary is in heaven, who says Mary is the way unto heaven. We are seeing them. Uniting. Now God is now saying, I will not have mercy on his children because they are the children of harlotry. So, your children, in other words, members, it speaks of every member of this Adventist movement. So, this is why you must understand Thus, we are members of any of the hallowed churches which have departed from Christ and united themselves with evil. Then we are corporately responsible for the terrible sins of the church. And as long as we remain connected with the, our hallowed mother church, then we cannot be completely clean and pure in God's sight. And God will not have mercy upon us. So, God looks upon all members of all hallowed churches without respect to those, who, those persons who put up a full, uh, the, the fuss about the, all the sins, abominations of the church, but still remain connected with them, with them, with the mother church. God is now saying, I will not have mercy upon you. So, tell the purpose of me in the book of um, the book of Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, verse 34. Acts 10, verse 34. You see, this is very serious, my brother and my sisters. Bible says in the book of Acts, chapter uh, 10, verse 34, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth I perceive, I perceive that God show no partiality. So, as one is being, uh, remain connected, or in, in bed with the, the hallowed, they are not the children of God, but they are the children of wonders. So, when we turn our Bibles again in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15 through 16. You see, today we want to uh, speak about the truth, you know, because time it is important. It is not on our side. So the Bible says in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and we shall read from verse 15 through 16. So the Bible says, or do you not know? That he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her. For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to uh, the Lord is one, uh, is, is, one in, uh, is one spirit with him. So, as long as you are joined to every fallen denomination, you have become one. You are now considered one in the spirit. So, the question is, whose spirit is leading you? So, as long if you are joined to the harlotry uh, church, therefore you are one with the hair. So, all the consequences and the punishments and the judgment, 
you will be counted and you shall be responsible for all those things. My brother and my sisters, this is important message of our time. So God also tell us in the book of Amos chapter 3, verse 3, can two work together except they agreed. My brother and my sister, this is our time. A time to repent. A time to bring about the changes. All the lies which you have been fed by your pastors and leaders. Now it's time to align all the lies and be connected with the Christ. Come out from among them and be connected with the Christ. So many of us have been fed with the lies every time and again. Where pastors and preachers saying to us, you know, we have to remain part of the uh, a body. The body of Christ is built with the different people who are having one mind, one spirit, one faith. So, once when there the are two or three are gathering, they are the church of God. So all these buildings which we are seeing, they are not a church. God does not dwell in the place built by the hands of men. On all those buildings, this is where it, they become the cages of every unclean and hateful beds. And God is now saying, come out of them. You see, some of you think that salvation, it depends uh, upon your, your, your belonging to a denominational church. You have been lied to. Your salvation does not depend upon your belonging to a denominational churches. Your salvation, it is uh, when you are being connected to the Messiah, the Lamb of God, which will have been slain from the very foundation of the world. So, if we are a member of a hallowed church, then we are no longer uh, two entities, but we are one of the flesh with the church in a hallowed tree. And we cannot be a member without our, our consent or without our agreement to remain members. Thus, by our choice and agreement to continue membership and union with a hallowed church. So, therefore, we are held completely responsible for the harlotry and no longer a child of God. This is very clear. So, what will be our punishment if we choose to remain connected with a hallowed church? Please, Turn your Bibles with me in the book of Joshua, chapter 7. Joshua, chapter 7. Turn your Bibles with me in the book of Joshua, chapter 7. And we shall read. Because, you know, uh, we will be destroyed right along with her, the mother church, the hallowed church. And it was not just uh, Achan who was destroyed from what we've learned in our part one presentation where we understand that Achan was destroyed along with all the children of Israel who were in agreement with him. So, but uh, all the people who were in agreement with him, they were all destroying, including their family members. So, even though his family did not participate in stealing the goods, yet they, pan, they, they perished right along with him because they were all of one flesh, one con connection, one spirit. And it's in the book of Joshua, chapter 7. And verse 24, it says, Then Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, the silver, the garment, the wedges of gold, his, uh, his sons, his daughters, 
his oxen, his donkeys, his sheep, his tent, and all that he had, they brought them to the valley of Acha. So all the people who were in agreement with him, they were just both destroyed. So my brother and my sisters, in the book of Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20, Bible says in the book of Proverbs uh, 13, verse 20, He that walketh with, the, with wise men shall be wise, but a, com a companion of fools, so a companion of fools uh, are those who depart from God and his wisdom shall be destroyed. So, my beloved Seventh day Adventist, she distanced herself from since 1905. We are seeing them. They distanced themselves from their true mission. Going and going. Embracing and embracing. All the lies through the men like John Harvey Kellogg. And we're seeing in 1995, what happened? Why are you no longer using the landmark of the three angels' messages which this movement was found upon? And now, why today are you using a logo of the new world, uh, of new order? You must ask yourself. And now you wonder why the trumpets are so silent. You wonder why men like Diop and other are now linking and even involving the, the men of sin, the Catholic, in their meetings. And you wonder why they even publish the new books like The Great Hope in repressing uh, the great controversy. Ask yourself. Men understand that they must be cleansed from sins they personally commit, but they seem uh, to be blind that they must also be cleansed from corporate sin. But this is impossible that any person can be completely cleansed from all spots and stains of sin while they knowingly remain connected to and in union with a corporate and apostate church living in halotry. That is why God has revealed that these people are to find their freedom from both the personal and corporate sins outside of the wicked church and it will only be those who love God and corporate uh, and uh, actually when they love God supremely that will, they will follow his will and walk straight and narrow pathway of separation and even the laws of the nature proclaim to us the same principles of truth. So, in the book of Ezekiel chapter 21, verse 1 through 3, it says, Son of man, set thy face toward Jerusalem and say to the land of Israel, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I am against thee. I will draw forth my sword out of, his, of this sheep and with you. I will cut off from thee the righteous and the wicked. So, this message applies to my beloved Adventist today. The Lord is saying, Thus said the Lord, Behold, I am against thee, and I will draw forth my sword out of his sheath, and will cut off from thee the righteous and the wicked. When you remain connected. So brothers and sisters. Why are the righteous. Destroyed along with the wicked in the church. Because. The good and the righteous. People refuse to separate themselves from. The company of the wicked. And disconnect their union. From the doomed church. So what does God want these people to do if they find themselves resting in and connected to any part of the church or body that is polluted with sin and wickedness? Isaiah 52, verse 11. Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence, 
Though, and then, touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of ye, by ye clean, that be ye the vessels of the Lord. This is the message to you and I, my brother and my sister, this afternoon. God is now saying, come out of here and be separate because she has embraced the every fallen doctrines, every doctrine of Babylon. So therefore, by so doing, she is or become fallen. God is now saying to us, let us come out of here and be separate. And my brother and my sisters, let us need the warnings right now before it is too late. The judgments are coming. And if you remain connected to uh, every fallen denominations, my brother and my sister, read Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah. First read Ezekiel 21 verse 1 through 3. You understand the consequences. God is going to destroy the righteous and the wicked. And all the, the righteous are going to be destroyed with, with the wicked because they heard and they know the truth. But they refuse to separate themselves. So they are going to be, to be destroyed. So my brother, uh, the book of Micah chapter 2 verse 10, it says, Arise ye and depart. 